Hey there, friends and families. It's great to be here with you for Church at Home. I'm Gary, and I've got a little question just to get things started. Tell me, what's the heaviest thing a person can carry? For me, I think it's after I get groceries and I want to take the whole bunch in, so I'm loading up like 12 bags on each arm. Or maybe my friend Harry, his dog, is like a small elephant, a small fluffy elephant that weighs a million pounds. Or another one I think of is when I have to carry my suitcase home after vacation. I'm pretty sure that is the heaviest thing that I could carry. In fact, I would have to ask for help just to, just because it's so heavy. This reminds me of a feeling that I get when I'm, when I'm guilty. That feeling in my gut when I've done something wrong, it's super heavy. Like if I just had a bad day or if I remember a big mistake that I made. But just like I can ask for help with my suitcase, I know I can ask for help when I feel guilty too. In fact, that reminds me of today's point. When I feel guilty, I'll ask God to forgive me. Now, let's jump into Connect. Here's Jake. I'll be honest. I used to get kind of nervous about singing and dancing in front of my friends. But then, I started thinking about how awesome God is and how he's done so many good things for me. I realized, no matter how nervous I feel, God still deserves to be worshiped. So now, I sing and dance to worship God whenever I get the chance. And those nervous feelings aren't such a big deal anymore. You can too. Get up on your feet and let's connect to God together.
This life is a journey A path made for me With every step I take As I run this race I'm becoming the person You call me to be A child of God A life redeemed So I set my eyes on you Jesus, I'm ready I'm ready to go Where you lead, where you lead, I'll follow Where you lead, where you lead, I'll go I'm not gonna wait, I'm gonna wait for tomorrow This is the journey directly at the camera? Yep, just ignore the camera, look at me, okay? Now, please state your name. Mike, you know my name. But people who are watching this documentary don't know. All right, please state your name. My name is Alyssa. Alyssa, do you think Dot is guilty of stealing Luke's piggy bank? Are you crazy? Please just answer the question. Dot stealing the piggy bank is like me shaving my head. No way on earth is that gonna happen. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Mike, and I've decided to make a documentary about guilt to answer this question. Did Dot do it? Have you ever done something wrong you knew you shouldn't do? Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe it was on purpose. Sure you have. Everybody makes mistakes. But on the quiet afternoon of March 12th, somebody did something wrong that rocked Connect HQ. And it all started with a grown man and his piggy bank. This is Dot. 
She stands accused of stealing Luke's bright pink piggy bank, lovingly referred to as Mr. Piggle Giggle. Luke, I'll start with the obvious question. Can I get a rocket scooter? I thought this was a documentary about my missing piggy bank. Just answer the question. No, you can't. Rocket scooters are a violation code 6892. Agree to disagree. All right, moving on to the next obvious question. A piggy bank, why? When I was a kid, I broke my sister's piggy bank on accident, and she saw how guilty I was feeling. So when she bought a new one, she also bought me one too. And that was a reminder to show that she forgave me and that I didn't have to feel guilty anymore. Did you apologize to her? Oh, of course I did. At first, I still felt guilty, but every time I saw that piggy bank, I knew that she forgave me and I could move on. Just like when I sin or mess up with God. When I feel guilty, I'll ask God to forgive me. And he always forgives my mistakes. And where is your piggy bank now? Smashed. Someone broke it apart and took all the money inside. Who did that? I don't know. But all evidence is pointing at Dodd. Here's what we know. Thursday, March 12th, afternoon. Luke asked Dodd to watch his piggy bank. Within the next hour, the piggy bank disappears. Now, what happens next is as surprising as an ice cold bath. I was on a security sweep when I found a piece of the piggy bank in front of Dot's locker. It's not like her to do something like this, but it certainly made her look guilty of stealing Luke's piggy bank. Thought about that question? Could there ever be a mistake so big that God couldn't forgive it? Which led me to this discovery. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. is alive. Have you ever made a mistake? I'm not talking about a small mistake, but a big one. One so terrible that you can't even look someone in the face and tell them what you did. I could see the rocks in their hands their fists raised high in the air. I had sinned, and I got caught, and the punishment for the sin that I committed, death. The religious leaders, or the Pharisees, brought me before the crowd. These men know everything about God's law, or at least they think they do. I was terrified. I couldn't even look up. I just knew any second the first rock would be thrown and that would be it. Then I heard the Pharisees ask Jesus if I deserved to die. I had heard about Jesus, heard that he healed the sick and made blind men see, but Jesus said nothing. I just saw him bend down and write something in the sand. But the Pharisees still kept demanding an answer. My heart was pounding in my chest. I thought, this is it. He's gonna end up agreeing with them and I am going to die. But Jesus just kept writing in the sand. But then he spoke. He said, let any of you who have never sinned throw the first stone. Did I hear that correctly? Did Jesus just defend me? Me, of all people. I thought I heard the crowd walking away, but I was too afraid to look up. Then he spoke to me. Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord. 
Neither do I, he said. Go and sin no more. Jesus stepped up and defended me, me. And when I looked into his eyes, all I could see was love. Instead of feeling ashamed, I felt loved, I felt free. And the only one who could have ever done that is Jesus. And he can do the same for you. Oh, how he loves you. No matter what you've done, Jesus' love can cover all your sin and shame. I know because his love did it for me. There you have it. If you're feeling guilty about something you've done or you're feeling guilty about something bad that's happened that wasn't your fault, doesn't matter what happened. Jesus loves you and forgives every mistake. Now, in the days following the disappearance of Mr. Biggle Giggle, there was a lot of guesses on what happened on that fateful day. I've asked the Skit Vision group to help me reenact some of those guesses. Guess number one, the most obvious one is, the evil Dot Gambit. This first guest says that as soon as Luke was gone, Dot, or someone who looks exactly like Dot, stole the piggy bank because she wanted the money inside, presumably to buy candy or toys. What if Dot did do what she said she didn't do instead of doing what she didn't say she did do? Do what now? Everybody makes mistakes. What if Dot did it? Look. I make mistakes all the time. Like just last week, a show came on that I knew I shouldn't watch, but I totally watched it anyway. And afterwards I felt really guilty. But instead of rolling around in that guilt, I apologized to God and asked him to help me not do it again. So is that what Dot should do? If she's guilty, yes. When I feel guilty, I'll ask God to forgive me. But I don't think she did it. Then who did? What about the dog? That leads us to guess number two. This is what some people think happened. I call this the red-handed rover gambit. Lots of things have gone missing around town and some people claim to have seen a dog at the scene of the crime. This led some people to say that Dot didn't steal the piggy bank. It was either an actual dog or a person dressed as a dog that stole the piggy bank when Dot's back was turned. To learn more about this guess, we spoke with a local pet expert. Please state your name. Local businessman, Chuck Forte. All right, you know a lot about dogs, right? <laughs> I own a pet store. I think I know a little about dogs. So do you think a dog could be trained to steal things? <laughs> you know, I think this whole the dog did it stuff is bogus. Who would believe that a dog is stealing things around town? Lots of people around here do. Well, sounds fishier than my fish tanks. What if it's not a real dog, but a thief in a dog suit? Listen, my store was robbed too, and I didn't see any dogs. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. He seems pretty sure that it wasn't a dog. Well, if it wasn't Dot, and it wasn't a dog, and that leads us to our third guess. An unpopular guess, but a guess nonetheless. I call it the thin air gambit. This guess says that Luke's piggy bank just straight up vanished in the thin air without question or motivation. If this guess is true, the bank was maybe stolen by a magician or just gave up being an object on earth. Even though it was a wild guess, somehow it made sense to me. I was ready to pack up my investigation and return all this red yarn to the whatnots group when an eyewitness account came forward so shocking, it was like biting into an electric eel sandwich. This person asked to not have his face on camera. We won't use his real name. Tell me what you saw, Fredison. On Thursday afternoon, I saw a person in a dog costume walking around in the halls. This is important information. Why are you hiding your identity? I don't want anyone to know who I am because I feel guilty for not saying anything before. And this way, maybe they'll think that Dot didn't do it and she won't be mad that I didn't say anything earlier. But you're still hiding. If you feel guilty and keep it a secret, it could stick in your heart and brain and make you feel like a bad person. I don't want that. What do I do? Get everything out in the open. Everything? Everything. Okay, 
Turn on the lights. I was proud of Edison for coming forward instead of hiding the fact that he felt guilty. He helped me with this verse from the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. All right, so say it like this. 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins to him, if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. He is faithful and just to forgive us. Tell God everything, even when you feel guilty. Ask him for forgiveness and he will always, always forgive you. Thanks for helping me get everything out in the open. So the eyewitness confirms that there was a dog in the building on that day, but says he didn't actually see it with the piggy bank. And how does that explain the evidence in front of Dot's locker? Seemed like I was farther away from the answer than when I started. I need to go straight to the source. Someone set me up. Even if you did. I didn't. But even if you did do it, Dot, God would still forgive you. I know. You do? Of course I do. I've made oodles of mistakes in my life so far. I left my marbles on the tile floor and my dad slipped on them. That's been forgiven. I lied to my teacher saying I didn't glue my hands to the globe on purpose. That's been forgiven. I know all about making mistakes, but every time I do something wrong, I know I'm forgiven when I apologize to God, and then I forgive myself. So have you forgiven yourself for stealing Luke's piggy bank? If I had stolen that piggy bank, and I didn't, I wouldn't hold on to that guilt. I would have already let it go. At the beginning of this documentary, I asked, have you ever done something wrong you knew you shouldn't do? I think we can all think of something. But have you let it go? Are you carrying guilt around like a heavy sack full of potatoes? If you're feeling guilty about something, let's consider all that we've learned. The Bible tells us this in the book of 1 John. Say it like this. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Don't hide your guilt. When you sin, tell God about it. Ask for his forgiveness and know that he will always forgive you. It might seem like your sin is too big to forgive, but it isn't. There is no sin that is too big for Jesus to forgive. You don't have to worry about that. Guilt is something everyone feels sometimes. You might feel guilty when you do something that is wrong, or you might feel guilty when something bad happens to you, even when it's not your fault. Like if someone hurts you or says you did something you know you didn't do. Don't keep your guilt a secret. Get it out and let it go. You're not a bad person. Talk to God about your guilty feelings and talk to a trusted adult about it. Ask them to help you figure out why you're feeling guilty and what you can do about it. Apologize to God and then forgive yourself. The Bible says God's not mad at you. He's forgiven you. Say it out loud. When I feel guilty, I'll ask God to forgive me. And then let go of your guilt. Remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Even though Dot says she didn't do it, in accordance with Connect HQ regulation, she will still have to face a disciplinary hearing. Ray will have to decide on a punishment if she thinks Dot stole Mr. Piggle Giggle. That decision will be made next week. Man, making a documentary is hard. I am never gonna get all this yarn untangled. You know, Jesus forgives our sins and mistakes, no matter how big they are. We just need to let go of our guilt. And if you're carrying guilt and wanna talk to Jesus about it, you can. You can follow Jesus with your life. Just remember your A, B, Cs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. And if you want to make that decision today, 
be sure to talk about it with your Connect small group leader before you leave. Those ABCs remind me just how good God is. He gave us the best gift ever, His Son, Jesus. Talk with a parent or a leader you trust when you're ready to follow Him. You can pray together and then celebrate your forever friendship with Jesus. Jesus will always forgive us. Let's say the Bible verse we learned about that. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us. Fantastic job! Nobody likes feeling guilty, so let's figure out how to deal with guilt. I'll give you an example of something that might make you feel guilty. I'll give you two ways you could deal with it. You shout out the one that is actually good for you. Here we go. When Sophia's brother made her mad, she called him a bad word. She already apologized, but now Sophia feels like a bad person. Should Sophia pray and ask God to help her stop feeling guilty? Or should Sophia try to act perfect and hide her bad feelings about herself? What do you think? Great job! Praying is definitely a great way to talk to God and ask for forgiveness. It's good to try to make good choices, but not hide how we are really feeling inside. Okay, let's go to the next one. Julian's bedtime is eight o'clock, but when he had a babysitter, he told her that bedtime was 11 o'clock so he could watch a movie he wasn't allowed to watch. Now, Julian's feeling guilty. What should Julian do? Apologize to his parents or keep it a secret? You're right. Apologizing to his parents is a good way to stop feeling guilty. We have one more example. All right, let's see what it is. Maya and her friend were playing baseball outside. Maya threw the ball and it broke her neighbor's window. Now she's feeling really guilty. Maya can either write an I'm sorry note to her neighbor or she could lie and blame her friend. Which option would you choose? You guys did such a great job. Maya definitely should write a note to apologize. Lying will only make her feel worse. Thanks for helping me out with that. In the Bible, God tells us that if we confess our sins, He will always forgive us. We don't have to hold on to guilty feelings. Check out the Bible plan called Dealing With Feeling in the YouVersion Bible app, or click on the link in the description. Now, I'm gonna head out, but there's still more fun for you, so stick around and talk with your family about how to handle guilty feelings. Stay tuned for the cues, and I'll see you guys later.